Hello and welcome to another new video here on the Sophistic for You YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about nonlinear temperature for quad elements. And this will be a very brief video, so just to collect the basics of the workflow. The example I want to explain to you the workflow on is a very simple one. It's a 10 meter long, 1 meter width stripe modeled as quad elements. And on this stripe, we want to assign a nonlinear temperature curve as we can see here on the screen. We will come back to this a little bit in more detail later. Now let's jump into Sophie Plus and see the definition of this one meter stripe. Um, let me just open the properties straight away. So I left everything on the fold except the group number. As you can see, I've used group number 99. This is important for me to identify the elements afterwards when I go ahead and assign the load in my temperature load case. Other than that, everything is on default, so nothing else is here to explain. Let's jump to Sophistic Structural Desktop. So we basically need to set up two tasks. First, we need to define the temperature load and second, we need to analyze it. So let's start with the definition of the temperature in the quad element. For that, we use the program module Sophie load. So you can see we need to use the text input for this workflow. There's no other way around it. Let me quickly go through the input lines. The first input line indicates the program module we're going to use. It's Sophie load. And the very last input line in the line 20, it's the end. And in the second input line, we have this header. And all those three input lines basically specify the program module block. Then in the input line three, we got the command unit zero. So basically I pick the unit set zero. And this is necessary just because I have used afterwards in the definition of my uh, layers of my temperature, uh, the unit meter. So basically unit zero allows me to enter meter for my input values here in the set zero item. Then I use the echo command to basically extend the information of the loads I have specified. That's useful for me to check in the printouts my load assignments. And then the next input lines six and seven are already about the specification of my load or my temperature. Input line six is load case definition with the load case number 101. The type is a none type and I got a title nonlinear temperature. In the input line seven, we got the quad command and now it gets interesting for us because this command allows me now to define loads or temperature for quad elements. And the first thing I'm going to do in the command, I tell the software pick only group number 99. Then I pick the load type, in that case, it's a temperature. We see that here with the T. And then we got three more items to specify the temperature input itself. And before we jump into this input, let me show you in the PowerPoint uh, just quickly how the definition works. Every load you assign needs a load value. And it's not different when it comes to the temperature loads. However, in that case, the workflow works a little bit different. So instead of specifying the temperature value in the load item, we use a unit load for the load value, but we factorize this unit load one to the particular temperature value you want to use. So we see the first column P indicates the unit load and the third color temp, it's the factor we will use to multiply this unit load. In our case, here we see at set minus 0.10 meters, we have 20. So basically the software will use 20 degrees Celsius for us. And while speaking of this minus 0.10, this is basically the distance from the center line of my quad element. So we see I have minus 10 and we have at the bottom plus 10. And in total, we got 200 millimeter height. So basically the thickness of my quad element is 200 millimeters. Let's head back to a Sophistic Structural Desktop to complete the text input. We see here the input item P. As I mentioned earlier, this is the load value and this is one. So we use a unit load value. And then it's about 
to enter Z0 and F0. Z0 is basically the distance where I want to assign this load in the height of my quad element and F0 is the temperature value I'm going to use. Now we have just used one Z0 and one F0. And then at the end we have this double dollar and this double dollar indicates a line break in the cadmium syntax. And basically you can imagine that you would keep on writing Z1, F1, Z2, uh, F2 and so on and so forth. However, Sophistic allows you by using this uh, line break option to simply write following values as I did here in a table. Okay, we got all the values here entered. Let's calculate the task and see what we have in the report. Okay, here's the report. And in the report, we see straight away all we have entered. We see the group number 99, the type T, we see the load value 1.0, so our unit load. And we have also column unit, which indicates now my uh, temperature values I'm going to use. And of course, we have also the coordinate in the local set direction pointed out here as well. So I can double check my inputs as well. Okay, now the first step is done. We have successfully defined our load. Now it's time to calculate the load. And you might think, okay, that's not a big deal. I just run a linear analysis. Well, unfortunately, it's not that simple. I mean, it's not difficult neither. However, you need to tweak the input a little bit. And as we have used a layered input for our loads, we need to tell the software to consider it as such in their analysis. And this is done here as well in the text input. So you can't use for this approach the standard graphical input. Okay, let's see what we have here in this uh, text input. We use the program module ASE as we can see and we got only two input lines we need to consider. The first is this control command and the control command in tells now the program there has been a layered input for my loads earlier in the project. So the software knows it needs to consider it that way. And the two items we need to enter basically are here uh, the opt item which indicates this end layer and we have also a val well, um, item we need to fill and this val well item allows me now to specify the numbers of layers for my quad elements. I've used 10 which should be absolutely fine. However, if you have a thicker quad element then you might want to increase this number. You can always of course use the user manual. So let's click on this option and lay and you find also further explanation of this option and the available input values. Okay, so this is the most important input line you need to do. And the very last input is, of course, to recall the load case you want to calculate. And in our case, it's load case 101. So we got only this load case. So let's calculate it and see what we get. Let's jump to the system visualization. Let me close also here the documentation. So the load case is calculated. It shows up over there. Let me stop or freeze this a visualization and we see the uplifting due to the temperature we have assigned in our uh, quad elements. So there's one more thing I want to show you because when you specify this nonlinear temperature it's always nice if you can double check basically the shape you have defined somehow visual right so it's much easier for you to double check it that way rather than going through the numbers in the report. So what you can do is you can simply double click one of those elements and automatically the element info shows up here in system visualization in this sidebar. You see it already popping up in the bottom left. So we can double check the shape here as well we have specified. And also you might notice that the entered layers, so have, we have used 10 layers, also are indicated with these dashed lines. Uh, in the local set coordinate of the quad element. In the case that this image isn't showing up immediately, don't worry, maybe you need to select the option layer temperature here from the drop down. So double check this uh, if this option layer temperature is actually active. Let's do a quick recap. So when it comes to a nonlinear temperature assignment in quad elements, you have to take two steps. 
The first step is to create a nonlinear temperature uh, shape in the program module Sophie Load. And the second step is to use the program module ASE to perform the calculation of it. And very important, in the program module ASE, we have to use this control command with the option end lay and the value and uh, the layer number basically you want to use. That's it actually for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And if you want to learn more about the text input and the basics and the fundamentals, you will find the link in the description to the text input in Sophistic FEA Fundamentals course, where you can learn the academic language to create proper scripts for your projects. So thanks for watching and I hope I can welcome you in one of the next videos again.